Hey everybody, Swiggles here, and I'm making this video as per tradition for a 2015 wrap up. I'm gonna talk to you about where you can get all of my music for free, and I'm gonna go one by one over all the cool stuff that happened this year, all of my videos, um, especially because I know probably most of you guys have missed one or two, um, and I've been getting all those comments and I really want you know, people to know that I made stuff. And then I'm gonna talk about 2016. Um, and what kind of stuff I might do then. So uh, let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to say is that I have a download link in the description where you can get about 15 to 16 covers from this entire year. Um, I don't remember exactly where it starts, but you're gonna get stuff like Crate's Lair, you're gonna get Dearly Beloved from Game Mark Remixes, uh, first uh, record volume album label one. And you're gonna get stuff like I collaborated with, like with Sound Old VGM, stuff that wasn't on my channel, but you might have missed because of that. So it's all nice and neat, all tagged up and ready for you to download. So definitely check that out. Next thing I'm gonna say kind of early ahead on is for 2016, I don't plan on doing these two videos a month kind of scheduled videos anymore. Um, they really don't get a lot of views per se. Um, the reception's usually great from a small amount of people and I'm really interested in making stuff that's kind of more consistent and cohesive. So I'm really going to work on quality and release stuff from the same game maybe all at once. Um, think PK Rockin' but better. In addition to that, I'm also in a few different groups such as you know, Materia, Gamelark Records, and those groups tend to release album-like things and um, I'm trying to push more for that kind of music work in addition to like commissions for other friends, video games. So hopefully you guys will still see a lot of content here. It's just not going to be the same weekly format that used to run amok in, you know, 2013. So hopefully you guys look forward to that, but you know, don't expect a Wednesday morning upload anymore. I'll probably be sticking to something more like Wednesdays, 12 p.m. whenever I do have something to share. The question I've gotten more than any other question this entire year that I'd like to address right now is, is there some sort of community for recording my own video game remixes? or even just remixes, music, whatever in general. And yes, there is. Finally, after speaking to my friend Gamelark, um, we kind of decided that there really should be a central hub. So for right now, I created with some help uh, reddit.com slash r slash VG covers. And if you guys don't know what Reddit is, it's basically um, one of the most popular forum sites on the internet that hosts a lot of smaller forums for any sort of topic you can imagine. There's millions and millions of people using Reddit, and our VG covers is just our hub for making games. So you can post your covers there up to two times a week. You can ask for help on recording or ideas. You can ask to collaborate or request someone to do a song. There's monthly contests and albums. And it's, it's just like a tremendously fun environment if you're kind of new to the area or you feel like you can't improve just by yourself. So I definitely recommend you guys take a look at that. I'm going to be helping out with that. I still give Skype guitar lessons and mixing lessons as well as doing paid commissions um, for like mix work or mastering work. And, um, you know, I think that's more than plenty without having to add on weekly covers or anything crazy. So hopefully you guys look forward to 2016. Now I'm going to go over the rambly, this was how that song went kind of section. I don't know that this is going to be for everyone. So I'll just say now that there's not going to be too many announcements after this. So um, I'm just going to go down the list historically. The first big thing to happen in 2015 was Operation 1-Up. Operation 1-Up is an album started by Thunder Scott, who's a channel I should post somewhere. And um, basically, the idea was to help our friend John Means or Darth Aurelius, um, you must have seen him in common, um, with a kidney operation that obviously in America is going to cost you, you know, $100,000. Um, so what we decided to do was use the multiplayer team from last summer as well as some new faces and um, create an album where the profit was going entirely to John's um, own foundation for saving up money for this kidney operation. Luckily John's been doing a little bit better and uh, we raised over $4,000 on this album. There's around 20 tracks, they're pretty cohesive, they range from video game music to uh, Miyazaki film music as well as Star Wars. 
um, which of course leads me to my contribution, which was I did a ten and a half minute Star Wars Episode Four medley, which I'll uh, throw up in the video somewhere. And uh, I'm actually really proud of this one because I'm a humongous Star Wars fan, as uh, some of you guys might have noticed by my recent upload. And, um, you know, it, it flows really well together. I've performed it in full on Twitch before, and I don't know. I think it turned out to be a really great album and a great precursor to our next charity album. The next thing I want to uh, talk about is the Level Up Challenge. Um, around February, I was thinking about what if I did a contest again, but instead of making it about my arrangements, like some of my earlier contests were, Level Up Challenge was a humongously, surprisingly successful event where not only were people competing with each other just, you know, for friendly competition's sake, but the idea was how do you improve yourself as a musician and as a recording musician and as an arranger in the world of video game remixes. So what I had everyone do, and definitely not doing this again, was enter two videos, your last one and your next one after working really hard on improving, um, you know, mixing techniques as well as uh, performing cleaner, better, faster, harder, stronger, um, and, you know, we had five or six judges, which, um, retrospect was definitely, uh, gonna delay the process, and, you know, we had a lot of entries, like 50 entries. It was really mind-blowing that that many people heard of me, wanted to do this challenge, believed in the idea, and I honestly can say that a lot of people, and I even entered myself, um, had a big leap of improvement you know, looking up all sorts of tutorials. And um, that also kind of ties into my recording guide. I created a recording guide this year, compiling very generalized, but hopefully still applicable ideas about how to record, how to take your guitar and get it into a computer, add drums, add bass, synthesizers, how to write a song differently than the original to where yours can stand out. Stuff like that, I really tried to um, you know, I really tried to convey everything I do without having it be outdated in a week. So um, you can check that out. If you have any questions about how I do my mixing to get the sound I do today, you can watch that and then you might get like 60 to 70% of what I'm doing at this very moment. So, um, and I'm pretty proud of the process. Another thing I did, but don't want to go too much into without getting uh, a trillion more memes on, is I did a musical number, which is slightly odd, but not for this channel anymore because I also cooked. But um, yeah, I figured that what would be a different recording guide than any other, and I figured I'd try to write my own little Broadway musical opening number. And um, it was weirdly okay received, so <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that too. Now the first song I guess we're going to talk about that wasn't associated with albums per se was Lucas' song. I did this cover around um, like February, March, right after Operation 1-Up. And um, it actually came about as a request from X Regent X, who won a free cover request from Operation One Up. Um, we had a stream and gave it out, and he picked Lugia's song. And I was among five friends who were offering uh, cover requests, and I said dibs immediately. Lugia's song is from Pokemon 2000, um, which is the second movie in the franchise, and. It's my all-time favorite, even though watching it as a 21-year-old adult male kind of... It, it killed all of the uh, magic of it pretty fast. That being said, the music is still fantastic, and this cover was really fun to make, honestly. Um, I did the whole orchestral parts, which um, I think no cover actually had managed to do yet. So I was kind of proud of that, too, and um, obviously I still stream this one and get it requested a lot. April 1st came along, and I wasn't making too many covers at the time, but my friend Blue Star Mako and I kept on bouncing around ideas for either something really different from my channel, being like a cooking show or a makeup tutorial, something really silly, or a fake Minecraft Let's Play. So I actually got to make a fake Minecraft Let's Play with one of my best friends, and it turned out weirdly funny and mostly just really fun to make. Um, you know, with no offense, of course, to Let's Players, I completely respect what you guys do, but there's too many Minecraft ones. Craig's Lair was probably my favorite cover to make up until maybe a month ago. Um, at the time, I really wanted to make every song that I put in my uh, One Week medley from the Family Jewel 7X contest that happened in 2013. And um, when I made that medley, I put in Crate's Lair from Metroid, 
along with a lot of other of my absolute favorite game songs of all time. And what ended up happening is I had a different guitar, different tuning, I started coming up with somewhat similar ideas, and then I realized I kind of want to be able to play this entire song if I just picked up my guitar, like perform it. And that's when I realized I should ask Toxic X Attorney, my buddy who did Ridley Sting from Super Metroid with me as well. And we kind of just winged it, I arranged some basic guitar ideas, and he just copied every single riff robotically perfectly, and added all sorts of beautiful like chordal ideas, his melody playing for all the choruses. It just became this really, really fun song to play for me. Um, with solo sections, references to the song Spor Spawn in it, and um, I don't know, it was just really fun to play, and it's still fun to play, and it's currently, I think, the only song you can hear on Twitch um, performed by two different video game musicians from two different parts written for them. So it's kind of like special whenever I see him play it on his Twitch, which you guys should definitely check out, or uh, when I play it on mine, he's there in the audience. It's like a special for a connection, if you want. Okay, Jungle World is probably one of my most random songs to have picked because it was from a Kickstarter. Now, if you guys don't remember, around April, May time, there was a company now called Playtonic Games, and they were creating a game, or are creating a game, called Yuka Laylee. And it's a spiritual successor to the hit Banjo Kazooie which was made by Rare Studios in the 90s. And what happened was a lot of those people have left, um, Rare was bought by Microsoft, and a lot of people miss that same feel of cartoonishness, platforming, exploration, and, um, you know, they really are trying to bring it all back. So with Ukulele, we picked Jungle World, uh, Thunderscott and I, because we were both humongous fans of Banjo-Kazooie, Tui, and, um, you know, we wanted to be first, I'm not gonna lie. And we even had some help from uh, Toxic X Eternity for a blistering solo. And it was honestly one of the most difficult songs to play, like most Grant Kirkhope songs because of the chord progressions. Raise Against Time EP kind of came out around the time that um, in my schoolwork and stuff, I started moving around a lot and I started getting really busy. And at that point, I was getting so busy that I felt like everything was happening really fast. There was a lot of setup and there was little time for music. So I decided to... Um, not only was I on a break, but I would take a lot of these songs that I had rewritten, and this isn't like, let's take the project in and change all the tones and sell it, but this was like, here's a thing I made two years ago, these were my favorite songs, here's some more, let's try it again. And I remade three of my medleys, my Age of Empires 2 one, as well as uh, Diddy Kong Racing, and uh, one more that I can't, Majora's Mask, that's the one. And I put two songs, uh, Big Blue from F-Zero, which is one of my all-time favorites, and I even had uh, Gemnon guitarist James Frazier put down an amazing solo on that, and uh, Soaring the Sky from Pokemon um, Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So this like five song EP was uh, basically I'm racing against time in real life, so let's just call it that. And, you know, I put it out there, I got some pretty nice reception, you know, relative to my own, um, you know, uh, amount of usual sales or whatever, and I really liked having an album out of some sort, just to like test the waters. Mining Melancholy comes out right around the beginning of my fall semester, and I felt like my brain had come back, to, as well as like, I started developing these new approaches to covers, um, as well as like my camera work, obviously I'm not, you know, putting it together where it's super dark and terrible. And Mining Melancholy was actually a project I made two years ago on SoundCloud. Um, I like to call these like my SoundCloud songs because I just put them on this website as audio with rough drafts and sometimes they never amount to anything, maybe like 50% of the music. Um, but Mining Melancholy started with the ambient, you know, and I started developing ideas on how to make it groove more. And um, I originally wrote a riff that was in like a different tuning, so I was like, I need to make something just as catchy. So um, I just wrote around and dropped A and started looking for like more big open chordy stuff, solos, and it became probably one of my favorite songs to perform 
as well as, you know, it is pretty well received. And I really want to do more Donkey Kong Country 2 in that vein, maybe just a little longer. Alright, the big daddy of the summer was Multiplayer 2. Now, Multiplayer 2 Co-op is a charity album that I helped uh, develop with David Russell, as well as most people from the Multiplayer 1 team, um, and several other friends. And basically, the charity album goes to Child's Play Charity, which um, is an organization that helps uh, kids get toys and books and games during um, you know their toughest times in the hospital. And um, of course, we released Multiplayer 1 uh, the summer before. So uh, if you haven't heard either of those, please check them out. There's links all over this video. And the thing about Multiplayer 2 Co-op is that um, we wanted to create a theme. Now, um, Multiplayer 1 originally was going to have some theme like this. Um, we wanted every song to be a collaboration. Every song has another musician, and there's going to be like some consistency in sound, some blending of genres, and make it extra special. We didn't try this out the first time because everyone was strangers, and it probably was not going to go as well. There were a lot of solo artists, and we wanted to respect that boundary. Um, but now that we were on the second album, boundary broken. So we kind of had to rush a lot of these ideas. Um, there was definitely like some, you know, laziness and, um, you know, we were just really trying to rush a lot of things at the end. Um, this was the most delayed album project I'd ever had. So, um, but, you know, enough with the bad sides. We created probably the best sounding charity album we've made to date. Um, and I got to be a part of a lot of the songs from production side, as well as for recording small parts. There were some fantastic arrangements like uh, Dire Dire Doc by um, Insane in the Rain Music, which featured about 12 or 13 musicians, as well as Little V Mills, who created a choir out of, um, you know, like eight to 10 of us for um, uh, Final Fantasy VII's, um, what's that one? One Winged Angel, last one. So it, it was really a compositionally great album. Unfortunately, we've undersold the first one, and um, the impact of that was probably, you know, we all did not release it the way that we're going to next time. So um, we're gonna work on how we release these things to where they can really catch attention, work on press. Um, we have some big ideas for MP3. Uh, the title is going to be unannounced, but it, it hopefully will be a pun about MP3s. Specifically on Multiplayer 2, I got to work on two songs uh, very like focusedly. The first one I'll talk about is Bramble Blast, which was Sab Irene. Um, whose channel you should check out, Idea. She wanted to collaborate with me for a long time, um, and I kept on asking what song would be great for us. Um, and we were stumped until all of a sudden we realized that we could do a Super Smash Brothers version of Ramble Blast or Stick a Brush Symphony. Um, similar titles, someone's gonna complain. They're different, they're barely. So uh, what we did was um, Sab arranged the entire thing she never arranged for guitar before, and um, she sent it along to me, all these drafts. And slowly and slowly, I was realizing this is going to be one of the most like jazz fusion ballad, you know, crossovers ever. So um, I put together some drums, guitars. We had a solo from Insane in the Rain music, and we kept on trying to emphasize groove and dance feel. And eventually, I think it turned out to be one of my favorite songs on the album. I'm biased, but I really do enjoy that song a lot. The other song I got to do was my own, which was Midna's theme from Twilight Princess. Now, I've had the idea for how the song would sound for maybe two years, but I didn't have um, a seven string guitar I could tune down to uh, drop an A flat. And, um, I didn't know how to piece together everything. So I kind of worked on this song for ages, and then slowly I had help from um, Terrace in Music and Rich Hot EB, um, who for provided a bunch of really good choral vocals for a bit of a middle section and a great guitar solo respectively. So it was, you know, it turned out to be like one of my favorite songs I've gotten to do, even if I spent years mixing it, still not happy. But you're gonna hear that for every song from every musician ever, so. Mario Kart 64 medley was, and probably is, my absolute favorite medley I've created and my favorite one to play. I play it all the time and that does not happen for almost any other song. The thing with the Mario Kart 64 medley was it was created for um, one of our RPG covers, or as uh, we're now titled, Pixel Mixers. 
uh, contests. So we had a simple N64 themed contest where everyone just submits an N64 song and we vote for the favorite one. And um, this one was just, I wasn't recording a lot. I really, really missed playing Mario Kart 64 and hearing the music a lot. And I hadn't done probably any of the songs. So I just put together all of my favorite ones, all the ones that weren't touched, the opening screen. This is another one of those, I, I knew how it was going to open in my head, very similar to Steve Vai's Story of Light. So I kind of, you know, just went from there. I really wanted it to be like a jamming, transitional kind of medley, uh, different sections, a lot of uh, cleaner and, you know, crunchy but not metal sort of things. and. Uh, I don't know, I just really like playing along to it now, and uh, I play it on Twitch almost every single time because, you know, it's such a great warm-up for what I like to consider my style, which is, you know, mixing a lot of fusion, progressive, you know, uh, those virtuoso guitarist style of music, whatever you want to call it, all together into one ugly mess. So I really enjoyed Mario Kart Medley a lot. Shala's theme was kind of interesting. I feel like it was mostly a result of me playing so much Chrono Trigger and I'm still stuck on the very last boss, of course. But it ended up being a little bit more of an experiment with some sort of mixes and arrangements. Um, I was listening to a lot of the Contortionist's language album and um, eventually I kind of pushed this one kind of away. Um, I really learned a lot from it, from the video um, editing and angles. But at the same time, it was pretty open ended -y. Um At best, I would say that I enjoyed the groove of this one. Conveniently enough, uh, friends Richard E.B. and Insane the Rain Music put out really, really good versions of Shala's theme, which I herald as some of their best work to date. So uh, if you haven't, you definitely need to check those out. Butter Building is one of those covers that I put together in probably four hours um, and then just redid for the most part. I actually lost most of the video files to this one um, and eventually just re-recorded a lot of the parts. Um, but I really wanted to do a Kirby cover and I really wanted to do a kind of funk cover or something a little more uh, lighthearted. And of course I was helped with Sab Irene with a fantastic saxophone solo, mellow enough to kind of keep with the, you know, the bouncy Kirby sort of feel. Materia might be one of the biggest projects in video game remixing history, if you will. Um, Materia was started by Sebastian Wolf after uh, hearing about the Final Fantasy VII remake happening on the PS4 in the upcoming year. And what really ended up happening was taking ideas from Harmony of Heroes um, for multiplayer, which is kind of flattering, and OC Remix. He basically combined the skills of 200 remixers, all different styles, um, you know, with some good experience in recording and collaborating. And we just took that album, the 200 people took a 100 something song album and just threw ourselves at it. We covered every single song multiple times and there's five discs for multi uh, materia. So my song was the very second one on the first disc, Opening Bombing Mission. I picked the song that I knew the most of because I hadn't really played Final Fantasy VII too much. And um, I don't know, I, I don't mind my arrangement. It's pretty basic for the most part, but I think that it was a really good inspiration to start doing a lot more elaborate Final Fantasy covers. So hopefully I'll do some in the future. The Super Mario Bros. Prog Medley is probably my most unwatched video, considering how much like per time spent on it, maybe. What happened was I was watching a lot of Super Mario Maker and playing a lot of Super Mario Maker, and I realized everyone's afraid of doing overdone songs because they're so recognizable in you know one form or the other. You know, you lose motivation if everyone's done something. It feels less unique. So. Naturally, I took upon it to challenge myself by making them so different that they almost sounded like weird. So, um, my Super Mario Bros. medley basically combined disco, funk, and metal all into this one mishmash. But I managed to cover every song in the album in pretty much one medley. So, uh, I covered the very first Mario game and I'm pretty happy with it. But I also got millions of comments saying that they missed this um, upload which probably means I shouldn't upload at 8.30 in the morning, right? Route 111 was one of those collaborations that actually took a very long time just because of how busy both me and my friend Forsaken Panda were. 
We really wanted to collaborate, especially because Forsaken Panda had only started recording during the Level Up Challenge that I mentioned for the first time, while he'd been a, a very seasoned guitarist. So I was really excited to work with Panda, he'd been a huge supporter, and we came up with a few ideas, um, you know, just talking about the genre, we wanted to do something that would be really one shot through, kind of like how Crates Layer worked out. So I let Forsaken Panda create this huge arrangement, tons of cool riffs, and then I matched all of his guitar parts um, as best as I could, created some harmonies, some cool sections with like Spanish sort of feels, and um, you know, traded off some really cool solos, and eventually it turned out to be one of my more unique Pokemon covers, so I'm pretty proud of that one. Katina was part of a Secret Santa sort of thing that we, um, a few friends of mine did. So Katina from Star Fox was basically my choice uh, for Dan Link, another YouTuber and longtime supporter, who I drew in this sort of uh, Secret Santa style game. Essentially everyone was given a random person to make a cover for, you know, using their favorite game or something. And um, I got um, Dan Link, and the person who received me was Godultima, who did a awesome version of Lake Hylia from Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, which is one of my absolute favorite games of all time. So um, it was a pretty cool experiment. I honestly have to admit I hate my cover of Katina because of how you know basic it was. It sticks to the arrangement. The most unique thing I do is I guess uh, put a guitar solo in, which happened about three weeks after filming the entire video because I was still kind of hesitant about it. I think it's a fantastic song. It's very, it was very difficult for me to come up with something to arrange it to sound way better. Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride is probably the result of nine months of being too busy to finish it. Um, when I met Jonathan Young through YouTube from finding his first Disney cover, um, we became pretty fast friends and um, eventually kind of introduced him to all the other video game musicians and uh, you know he was included on Multiplayer 2 um, as massive <laughs> request and uh, you know he's a fantastic singer and arranger as well so I figured maybe I should do a Disney song being you know that I'm also a pretty big Disney fan so I chose a song for one of my closest friends um, from Lilo and Stitch Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride and after all of the moving and school between both of us um, we finally got it out just in time for his album Young Does Disney 2 um, which I'll link to, and I also play another solo for him in the song Stand Out from the Goofy Movie on that album. Um, Hawaii Roller Coaster Ride was really fun. It was all about the riffs. Um, he wrote drums out and just put up some basic tracks, and then I put in guitars and bass and sang a few tracks. And it's just really fun to make a quick, short, poppy, punky sort of cover. So I really enjoy it. You can also catch a lot of small Elvis references in uh, some of my solo, which is kind of cool. Dearly Beloved might be the magnum opus of my channel this year, if I can even dub myself one, because I told my friend David Russell, who's behind the big project uh, Distani along with Kristen Nagus and Sebastian Wolf, that Dearly Beloved is such a powerful song, even if it's a simple song that I'm not going to release one until I come up with something at least six minutes, ethereal, powerful solos, piano, like emotion, and that's really what I sought out to do. Now with Gamelark Records, which was an album created by Gamelark in order to try to combine a lot of different genre people from all over the you know, YouTube scene into one cohesive album, I figured I'm gonna try to make a really, really good song for this. So I came up with a few ideas after listening to people like Pliny, C2IA, Guthrie Govin. I really tried to push for like a mix of progressive rock and jazz fusion all at once. Now the song got a little too repetitive for me, but at the same time I think this might be one of my best mixed and best performed and best written out um, riffs in all of my you know, music career. So I really enjoyed Dearly Beloved and convenient enough it might have been my most viewed this year. Um, which is, you know, not a lot in terms of uh, what I was expecting, but the Dark Knight medley was one of those experiments where I wanted to make an ambient cover, and it conveniently tied in with Halloween. Given that the Dark Knight and Hans Zimmer are some of my favorite like movies and soundtracks and composers, 
I really wanted to make a, some sort of digital soundscape and then put in riffs afterwards. Um, I watched a lot of covers of the Dark Knights theme and I got really inspired. So, uh, you know, I put this one together with as little lead work as possible, mostly just to see if I can recreate some of those cool grind, like grainy grating sounds that Hans Zimmer is famous for making and a lot of the percussion and electronic integrated orchestra. So this one was almost not even a guitar cover. Galaxy News Radio Medley is getting pretty recent. Um, with the upcoming Fallout 4 and my huge fandom for Fallout 3 in New Vegas, um, I really wanted to do some of the music probably since high school. Um, but naturally I wasn't too confident in any of my vocals or um, more importantly arranging jazz. Big band, swing, club sized jazz music. It was daunting. It is daunting. And unfortunately, all I had at my disposal was MIDI and samples. So what I did was I worked really hard on guitar, bass, and um, my vocals, as well as putting in like a few lead parts and some of these trumpets that you hear on the side of all these old bebop swing songs from the 40s and 50s. Um, and once I had like a pretty cohesive backing track, I went to my friends in St. Gray Music and David Russell and um, asked if they could play a solo and they did me one better. They played throughout the entire song just based off of um, the guitar parts I wrote for them and chord charts that I wrote out. Um, I think I learned a lot of music theory or my limitations in music theory from this cover and um, I also think that I'm starting to get better at vocals to where I'm comfortable doing you know, it once in a while as far as actual lyrical singing, but um, most importantly was that I made a really fun cover medley thing from a game full of contemporary songs, and I don't normally do that, so it was pretty fun. Spore Spawn might be my absolute favorite cover to play or have written to date. Um, the riffs I wrote for it were really, really grisly. I started using Positive Grids bias effects, um, which you'll see in some of my videos in the future as well, just for like the more realistic sound compared to uh, some of Guitar Rig's cabinets. And um, you know, this one had solos that I wrote out ahead of time, um, connectivity, it referenced the same riff I wrote in Crate Layer, which I think is kind of cute or something. And um, I don't know, I think Sports Bomb was just really powerful for like a song written about six notes, so I feel really proud of it, um, mix-wise and otherwise. And it's my last cover of the entire year uh, for a single song. I definitely want to do more Super Metroid in the future, so hopefully, uh, you know, if that's licensable and doable, I definitely want to look at it. And we come to the cooking show. Um, I hit 5,000 subscribers a month ago, which um, to me still blows my mind considering the last four years, but um, another thing occurs more. I don't like playing to trends at all, um, just because I, I don't get any creativity out of a lot of it. Um, so for those 5,000 subscribers, I know for a fact that most of them didn't come from um, me doing popular stuff as much as doing stuff that hopefully sounds good. So I'm really happy about that. I put out a Twitter poll asking what I should do for 5,000 subscribers because most of the stuff that people do, like musically, I've already done. Um, recording guides and gear tours, although I you know, definitely have a bit of new gear. And um, so I decided to do a cooking special and I cooked uh, grilled salmon and frozen veggies and made it into a little bit of a video that you can check out and um, it was all healthy and pretty inexpensive, maybe like four to five dollars uh, tops. Now this last video was obviously a humongous tie-in to um, The Force Awakens, the Star Wars' the seventh installment in their series. Um, after doing episode four, A New Hope, uh, for Operation 1-Up, I figured I should probably do my favorite Star Wars movie and my favorite movie of all time. So I spent, you know, quite a while orchestrating the entire Empire medley that I created first. You know, horns and strings and using like piano basses and coming up with ideas that could work with guitars as well as a big like backing orchestra. And then I transferred that in and started recording guitars as fast as I could with, you know, lead parts here and mixing over and over and over. And a 10 minute medley is not easy to mix. Um, I know that compositionally this one's even harder to play than my first one and it might have a few hiccups but having uh, you know Toxic X Eternity shred over the Imperial March and 
you know, a lot of more rippage and I don't know. I think that this one definitely sounds much, much better and it's based off of my favorite Star Wars. So hopefully you guys really enjoyed that. If you have not checked out that or any of these videos, um, I highly encourage you guys to, you know, give them a listen. Skip through if you have to. Um, but a lot of work goes into all of those, and hopefully that'll tide you guys over. Now to wrap up everything and everything for 2015, um, massive thank you guys so much, not just for, you know, watching once or clicking like or even subscribing, but like, enjoying my music and telling me so is just fantastic. Um, I've always had a humongous ratio of like comments as opposed to just, you know, views. And I really appreciate hearing specific parts that you like, things you don't like even. And um, the most important thing really has been that my music's getting closer to the music I listen to. And it's becoming to the point where I'm enjoying playing and listening to my own music a lot more than I used to. And, um, you know, if you guys want to hear me play music um, live, I even do some Twitch streams now and then at www.twitch.tv slash swiggles1987. Um, all these stuff, all these things are in the description, of course. Um, massive shout out to everybody on RPG covers, pixel mixers, groups, um, all of the musician friends that I've made this year that have, you know, really stood by this channel, collaborators. Um, people who have helped me with mixes over and over again and just you know the good friends that I've made over the entire year and four years by being on YouTube. Um, that's it.